Hello, my name is Clark Larson, and I'm on the board of the National Capital Area Chapter of the American Planning Association. I'd like to welcome you to this conference session called A Hotter Solution to Freeway Congestion in the Washington Metro Area with Patrick DeCorla Souza, and he's with the US Department of Transportation. This session was pre recorded before the start of the live virtual chapter conference and is made a bit available for all to view on demand during or after the chapter conference that runs from November 15th to the 17th, 2021. AICP planners may claim uh, 0.25 CM credits for viewing this session. And for those and everyone else, I hope you enjoy it. Now I'll hand it over to Patrick to start the session. So Patrick, please uh, start sharing your screen now and take it away. Thank you, Clark. My name is Patrick de Corla Souza. I'm going to talk about a hotter way to relieve congestion in the Washington metro area. Before I start, I want to be clear that I'm speaking in my personal capacity and not on behalf of my employer. I'll first talk about the congestion problem. I'll then present my solution and a high level evaluation. I will then conclude with implications for the Washington DC metro area. First, the problem. After the pandemic, an increase in teleworking could lead teleworkers to seek larger homes farther removed in the exurbs, increasing auto-centric development. Solutions that seek congestion by expanding highways, such as by adding new hot lanes, will simply encourage further auto-centric development. And the added highway capacity will induce new auto trips by those who were previously deterred by congestion. As auto-centric development continues, those who don't drive have significantly reduced mobility options. With the dearth of transit options, access to suburban jobs becomes virtually impossible for those without personal transportation. There is a hotter solution. I call it hotter lanes, lanes with high occupancy vehicles and tolls and transit on existing rights of way. Hotter lanes could be created by converting existing lanes. Toll revenues could then be used to incentivize transit and carpool use and dramatically expand equitable mobility options. The first component of the solution is incentivized carpooling. Our freeways have plenty of spare capacity that is not being used in empty seats of cars driven by solo drivers. But many solo drivers are willing to pick up a passenger if they are provided with cash incentives. For example, in South Bend, Indiana, 50 cents per mile was enough to incentivize drivers to pick up a passenger on their way to work about $5 for a 10 mile trip. And a recent survey in Northern California found that a $5 cash incentive could attract 15% of commuting drivers to pick up a passenger. The same study found that 15% of commuters would be willing to ride as a passenger for a daily cash incentive of just $1 of 50 cents per trip. This means that a total cash incentive of just $5.50 per trip could reduce commuter traffic by 15%. If paid to the passenger, the passenger could use it to pay the driver a $5 fare 
all done easily by using a mobile app. Hotter lanes could provide surplus toll revenue to fund the cash incentive. Where there are two existing lanes per direction, we would have one hotter lane and one free lane. To restore traffic flow on the hotter lane, we would need to shift 500 solo drivers to riding as a transit passenger or a carpool passenger. With three existing lanes per direction, the same 500 solo drivers would need to shift, constituting an 8% reduction in overall traffic. Speeds on the free lanes would be no worse than before. Variable toll rates would balance traffic between the hotter and free lanes in order to maintain speeds. And with four lanes per direction, we would only need a 6% reduction in total freeway traffic to have a free-flowing hotter lane. Drivers would have a choice, as before, to use the free lanes, but they would now also have the choice of a fast and reliable trip on the hotter lanes. They could use them free of charge as a carpool driver or pay a toll and continue to drive solo. Finally, they could ride as a passenger and be paid a cash incentive. Hotter lanes could enable express transit services. Express transit vehicles could provide speedier rides on hotter lanes instead of being stuck in traffic. Looking to the future, hotter lanes would make safe operation of connected and automated vehicles possible. Automated vans and buses could operate in driverless mode on the hotter lanes and accommodate growth in travel demand. Automation would reduce labor costs, which are the largest share of transit operating costs. Providing transit service could become less expensive. I'll now discuss an evaluation of the financial viability of hotter lanes. I used a sketch planning spreadsheet model which focuses on the impact of carpool incentives. Using a prototypical 10 mile freeway segment, I looked at hotter options on four lane, six lane, and eight lane freeways. The model I used is called the Pricing and Incentivized Ride Sharing Model or PAIR. I can calculate the cash incentives needed to achieve a desired percentage shift of solo drivers to carpooling. The model then calculates toll revenues operating costs, and net revenues. Average toll rates would be, would be higher on wider freeways due to the relatively smaller hot lane capacity. However, cash incentives would be much lower also because a smaller share of solo drivers would need to shift to carpooling. Net annual operating revenue would be negligible on a four lane freeway, but would exceed annual operating costs for six and eight lane freeways. Surplus revenue would be about six to $10 million annually. I'll now discuss the implications for the Washington DC metro. Maryland is currently studying new managed lanes on the freeway system. The study covers the Capitol Beltway and part of I-270. Average speeds on the regular lanes are projected to drop to 24 miles per hour in 2045 if nothing is done. 
speeds on the regular lanes would drop to 29 miles per hour if new managed lanes are built. I used the spare spreadsheet model to evaluate a hotter option. I found it could maintain existing speeds on the remaining lanes currently by incentivizing just 500 solo drivers to ride in a transit vehicle or in carpools. With the projected growth in travel in 2045, we would need a reduction of 870 vehicles or almost 10% of total traffic to achieve the average speeds projected if managed lanes were added. In 2045, cash incentives would need to be higher than today because many more solo drivers would need to be attracted to riding as a passenger. But with more carpoolers using the hotter lane capacity, less capacity would be available for toll payers increasing the toll price. Fewer toll payers means lower revenues. To increase toll revenue, we would need to make more capacity available for toll payers. This could be done by increasing the transit mode share with bigger cash incentives for transit use. A 40 passenger bus can carry as many people as 20 two-person carpools. Maryland has removed most of the eastern segment of the Beltway from consideration due to right-of-way constraints. Extra rights-of-way would not be needed with hotter lanes. Maryland could have a more complete express lane network while generating surplus revenue. The results I presented are very preliminary, based on a very simple spreadsheet model. To get more accurate results, travel demand and traffic simulation models must be run. Also, my cash incentive estimates are based on a single survey done in California. They need to be validated in Maryland and for the hot context. I presented a hotter idea to reduce traffic and help address congestion, but it can also have other benefits. Hotter lanes could help reduce carbon emissions, ensure safe operation of automated vehicles, and facilitate automated public transit. They could curb induced travel and urban sprawl. They could facilitate affordable travel alternatives. They could return revenue to the pockets of travelers who help reduce congestion. And they could potentially be funded entirely with toll revenue. You can get more information on the concept in the two papers listed here please email me at pdacorla at gmail.com if you would like a copy. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. DeCorla Souza for sharing that presentation. Um, this is very interesting and uh, analytical. I think I'm still trying to understand it myself. <laughs> and since we don't have an audience, maybe I'll, I'll ask a question for my own benefit. Um, are you saying that hotter lanes would allow uh, existing lanes to be used as toll lanes rather than the need to add additional lanes to right of way? Exactly, that's the whole point. And uh, that's why it is called hotter. If you look at the last two words, it says uh, uh, existing rights of way. Okay, that thank you. ER. Right, thanks for that. I thought that must have missed that. Um, the other thing, and um, as we wrap up the session soon, I just had one other question about enforcement. Would uh, ensuring that the carpooling use, whether it's as part of a cash incentive program or not, 
would the enforcement be the same as far as, um, you know, I'm not sure exactly how the police do it now to make sure that there is a carpooler in the lane, but do you, th do you see any other technological um, applications for enforcing the use of the hot lanes or would it be basically the same as is done now with, um, with existing uh, high occupancy lanes? Right, very good question. And uh, the paper that I talked about uh, men, uh, discusses new technology that has been actually deployed in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. And that just simply uses a mobile app. Uh, the driver has uh, the mobile app on his phone. Passengers have uh, the same mobile app. And uh, just with Bluetooth technology, uh, the app can uh, uh, confirm that there are two passengers in the vehicle and uh, that's the verification process. And you don't need police, you know, right now, police have to uh, stand and uh, wait in, in, on the shoulder and look inside vehicles and it's very complicated and very expensive. And it's not effective because for every one person they catch, there are 99 others that uh, go uh, free. And uh, uh, whereas this uh, technology has been proved uh, to be uh, very effective and it does not have a lot of cost because it's just done electronically. Okay, so as long as they're participating in that program the, through the app and whatnot, uh, it would be able to be more automated as far as enforcement. Mm -hmm. Exactly. For those that are just carpooling in general, that would be the same, you know, eyes, eyes on the lane type of approach. Uh, yeah, I mean, basically, uh, you, you carpool, you can get a, a match using the app. Mm -hmm. If you want, you know, just like Uber and Lyft, uh, you could uh, have it on demand or you could pre plan by uh, working with somebody who uh, normally goes on your route. Okay, good. Well, again, thanks for your presentation. Um, I guess we'll look for its application by the state. Is this, um, do you think this will be considered at all by the state or um, regional planning authorities? Or is this kind of just your, your research and considering it right now? Well, it's a research paper and uh, I've uh, sent it to the Transportation Research Board they, uh, I will be presenting it there. Uh, of course, uh, you know, whether or not the state accepts it uh, and uh, studies the alternative, it's their decision. But uh, I will, I, per, in my personal capacity, again, I'm speaking, <laughs> you know, not on behalf of USDOT, just be sure of that. I would, of course, uh, be very happy if the state uh, looked into this alternative, especially for the section of the beltway that has been uh, rejected mm -hmm. simply because of right of way constraints mm -hmm. and also uh, revenue issues. Okay, well, time will tell, I guess. Yes. Well, thank you all for listening and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference sessions. Thank Have a you. good day. Thank you.